Welcome to Renew. So glad you're able to join me here as we study the book of Revelation. And I want to just read Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. It says this, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Well, let's jump in. Revelation chapter 1, the very first verse, um, gives us really the purpose of this book. And the purpose of this book is to reveal Jesus Christ. That's the whole goal, the whole driving uh, end of the book of Revelation is pointing to the fact that Jesus Christ is coming again. He's going to put sin, Satan, oppression, suffering, all of that under his feet. And he will be exalted as the King of kings and Lord of lords. Revelation chapter 11, uh, verse 15, I believe is a key verse um, for the book of Re Revelation. It says this, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever powerful reminder that Jesus Christ is coming back. And then, uh, really the theme of this book. We've already gotten a sneak preview with that key verse, but really it's reclaiming the kingdom. You think about back before the fall. Jesus, or God, created the earth as a perfect uh, place. Adam and Eve were perfect, no sin. But then Satan came in and really hijacked God's plan, uh, perfect plan, and through his rebellion, it really plunged the human race into sin. That's why we experience the pain and the suffering, the conflicts that we do today. And yet Jesus Christ is going to reclaim this kingdom uh, for his own. Who wrote this book? Well, obviously we know God is the divine author, uh, but through his, the Holy Spirit and inspiration, he used men, holy men of God, to write down his message. And for the book of Revelation, it's specifically John the Apostle. Who was John? Well, he was one of um, Jesus' disciples. Um, he was the one who referred to himself affectionately as the one whom Jesus loved, the disciple whom Jesus loved. He wrote this book on the Isle of Patmos, in about the year A.D. 95. And what's fascinating is John, as he writes this book, he actually uh, is transported in his spirit to see the events unfold, future events unfold as they're happening. Now that blows our mind. We can't, we live in a time-space continuum. We can't um, imagine seeing the future happen ahead of when it actually does. But for God, that's not a problem. He lives above time. He's transcendent above time. And so he sees the present and the past and future all happening at the same time. And so he actually is unfolding to the Apostle John the future events as they're exact actually happening. It provides a lot of color. Um, drama to this uh, very picturesque book. Well, that's the author, John the Apostle, and I want to give you now a just an overview of the uh, book of Revelation, the events, some of the key events um, discussed in the book of Revelation. Um, looking back to the cross about 2,000 years ago, um, that was really Jesus Christ providing salvation uh, for that which was lost, for you and I as sinners. Jesus Christ took our sins on himself, and from that time on, uh, we're living in the church age. And uh, after the church age, of course, you can see the rapture there. Um, that's what the next event on God's prophetic timetable, the tribulation period, and then the second coming of Christ, and the millennium, and eternity. Here's a more detailed a chart that really walks through some of these uh, specific events that are highlighted in the book of Revelation, and also some key scripture passages. I want to just note that this timeline is available on our website, stoneridgebaptistchurch.org, 
and feel free. I didn't just encourage you to download that. Uh, they're on the same page as this video is posted, but there is a link. Um, just download that uh, PDF file. Encourage uh, that for your um, use. Well, let's walk through some of these events. And again, I can't spend a lot of time. This is just a uh, overview, a cursory a look. But let's look at the rapture. That's the next event, as I said, on God's prophetic timetable. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 and 17 talks about that. And then right after the rapture, we're not sure exactly how much time between the rapture and the tribulation starting, but there's going to be a seven-year period. And really the last three and a half years of that is a period called the Great Tribulation, or the Day of God's Wrath, where literally... Uh, unfathomable uh, catastrophic events are going to be unleashed. Um, God's judgments on this world. And in part, um, a major part of this is to bring Israel back to repentance, to help them to see that Jesus is their Messiah. Um, it's also a time where the Antichrist, and really Satan, is doing everything he can. Um, he's kind of in the last throes of his existence. He of his um, operation, his ability to operate on the earth, and he knows it. So he's going to do everything he can um, to uh, really just uh, create as much havoc and destroy mankind on the earth. That's the seven-year tribulation. And then we look at the judgment seat of Christ. That's happening in heaven simultaneously with um, what's happening on the earth with the tribulation. But the judgment seat of Christ is for believers. Um, those are folks who have trusted Jesus as their personal Savior, who will stand before the Lord to give an account of their lives on this earth, of whether it be good, uh, whether it's uh, good in the sense of the gold, silver, precious stones, or bad, worthless, works that will just burn up like wood, hay, and stubble. 1 Corinthians 3 um, talks about that. For all faithful believers, um, God gives us a great encouragement that there will be a marriage supper of the Lamb. In Revelation 19, 7 to 9, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of saints. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lambs. And this second coming of Christ, that's really the next event. Revelation chapter 19 uh, focuses on this, and also Zechariah chapter 14. And then Revelation 1 verse 7 even gives us a preview of that, and I want to just read Revelation 1 verse 7. It says this, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. One day Jesus Christ is coming back. His feet will touch down on the Mount of Olives. That mountain will split in two. And the nation of Israel as a whole will turn and recognize that this indeed is none other than Jesus, their Messiah, the one whom they pierced. And because of it, they will wail. And then the next event, of course, the second coming of Christ, really ushering in the millennial reign, the 1,000-year reign of Christ, talked about in Revelation chapter 20. And then the new heavens and new earth, um, a glorious time where this uh, old earth will be consumed, but God will create, create a brand new uh, heaven and earth. And then on that new earth is going to be a beautiful city described in detail, Revelation 21 and 22, the new Jerusalem. I refer to it as the city of reward. It's a city that Abraham specifically looked for, a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Um, obviously, Abraham was a man of faith. So he was looking for that city, living for that which would last for eternity. In Rome, um, Revelation chapter 22, in verse number 14, it says, Blessed are those who do his commandments, uh, that they may have right to enter 
through the gates into the city. Well, as we wrap up, I just want to give a few key takeaways for today. One is God is still in control. No matter what happens, no matter what happens next week, next month, next year, um, God is still in control. And we know the end of the story. Um, Jesus Christ will be exalted, King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus Christ is coming soon. That's a second takeaway I believe we can, as we study the book of Revelation, realize that Jesus Christ is coming. And I believe that sooner than later. Uh, with everything, all the developments that are happening in our world today, the stage is set uh, for the Antichrist to come. Um, it's a matter, it's obviously up to the Lord's uh, sovereignty and His time frame. Uh, but we need to be ready. That leads us to the third takeaway, prepare today to meet Jesus. And if you're not saved, and you're not trusted in Jesus Christ, can I urge you, Put your trust in Jesus Christ alone to save you. When I was uh, just a, a young boy at the age of six, uh, someone took the Bible, showed me from the Bible how I could know for sure all my sins were forgiven. Yes, I was a sinner. Jesus Christ died on the cross to take my sin on himself. And I made that decision, and uh, that's a decision every person needs to make have the hope that they are ready uh, for, to meet Jesus. But then as believers, you and I have an, uh, a responsibility to be ready to meet Jesus. I want to just close with this uh, passage from 2 uh, Peter, 2 Peter uh, chapter 3. In verse number 10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved? And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Are you ready to meet Jesus? There's no need for... Us as believers, if you've trusted Jesus as your Savior, there's no need for you to fear. But there is a need for us to be ready, to be prepared to meet Jesus. I trust this study, this series in Revelation, will be an encouragement uh, to you and I to live for eternity. Looking forward to our next uh, video. It's actually uploaded there on the screen uh, for you to take a look at. And we'll look forward to our time together next week.